the Lord, and I'm very excited about being here today, and uh, I'm really excited about being able to worship the Lord, so if you would just stand to your feet. Um, you know, the Lord kind of dropped my spirit to go back to the old school, to go back to where we started from, uh, and I can remember being up in Boyd's, Maryland, St. Mark's Church, uh, with the mothers at St. Mark's, and all of the good people there at St. Mark's United Methodist Church singing Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. And I know you might remember that from a long time ago. Uh, and uh, it's just something that has brought us a long way. Uh, and I, I just, I'm very excited to kind of take it back to the old school with a new twist on it. All right, so let's just lean on the Everlasting Arms this morning. <laughs> Put your hands together like this, like the old Give the Lord some praise. Come on, bless him. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We praise you. Magnify you and glorify you. Lord, we ask you now, Lord, to have your way in this place. Lord, have your way, Lord, with all of our issues and troubles and doubts and fears. Lord, we cast our cares upon you, Lord. And we ask you now to just have your way in the service. Lord, move through every song sung, everything done. Lord, God, every prayer prayed, every word spoken, Lord, yea, manifest everything. Lord, that you have ordained before the foundation of the world was formed. 
So, Lord, we just ask you now to come into this place. We welcome you in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you join me for now a song? It's a song that, well, it's a song that I've heard before. And, uh, you know, it's, it's an older song. Uh, but it's one that I wanted to just, you know, teach to you this morning. Uh, where we can, you know, just welcome the Lord into this place. You, you'll get it. You'll hear it. You'll know it. Uh, and then you'll, you'll be able to, to really get into it. Uh, but let's just welcome the Lord into, into this place. Praise 
Him, hallelujah. Come on, bless him. Hallelujah. He's worthy. Lord, we thank you, Lord, and we thank you and we praise you. Lord, we ask you, Lord God, to just have your way, Lord, in this place, Lord, in this day. Lord, you're worthy of our praise. We magnify you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let me take your seats. Our scripture reading is found in the Gospel of Matthew and that is Matthew 6 beginning at the 25th verse and it reads, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life what you shall eat or what you shall drink nor yet for your body what you shall put on is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment. Behold the fowls of the air, for they know they sow not, neither do they reap, neither gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubic unto your stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or when with all, wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all of these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto this day is the evil thereof. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come, Lord, on this day that you've made, and we rejoice, and we're glad that you have allowed for us all to be in it. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for, yea, Lord, this morning's uprising, last night's down-sitting. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for breathing the breath into these bodies made out of clay. Lord, we thank you for, Lord God, food on our table and Lord, yea, even clothes on our back, Lord, a roof over our heads. Lord, we know that it could, could have been the other way, but Lord, somehow, Lord, you provided for us because you're able to provide for us. So for that, we give you thanks, Lord. We give you praise and honor and glory. Lord, and we turn everything over to you, Lord, and say, Lord, have your way. We know that you are able to supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So, Father, we will now take no more thought, Lord, of how you are going to provide for us. Lord, we bless you, Lord, and we just allow for you now, O oh God, to manifest your word in our lives. Lord, we ask you now, Lord God, to travel, Lord God, from, Lord, from here to Japan, Lord God, and Lord God, touch the people there. Lord, you know, Lord, the devastation of homes, and 
Lord, and devastation of life, Lord, that has taken place. Lord, you know everything. But, Lord, we, we stand on your word here, Lord God, that this word is for us and this word is for them. Lord, that they can take, don't have to take thought of how they'll be provided for, Lord, because we know that according to your word you are able to provide. So, Lord, we ask you now, Lord, to send help, Lord, to send help to every family that needs to be helped. Lord God, for those who are grieving, provide comfort, Lord. For those who are struggling, Lord, provide help in the way of, Lord God, yea, resources, Lord, people and, Lord, equipment and, Lord God, whatever they need, Lord God, to, to get, Lord, them to a place of rest and comfort. Lord, whatever, Lord God, if, it, if it's a, uh, helicopters or, Lord God, trucks or ships or whatever, Lord God, yea, is needed, Lord, provide all of those needs, Lord, through all of the countries of the world and all of the people of the world. And, Lord, we ask you, Lord, why you're providing for the people in Japan, Lord, if you will provide for the people in Haiti, Lord. Lord, God, it's been a year and some more, Lord, and, Lord, they are still struggling, still living on the streets like dogs. And we ask you now, Lord, God, to provide for them a home, homes, Lord, God, and, and help, Lord, God, and, Lord, in a way, Lord, God, that they can, Lord, yeah, yeah, be brought up out of the horrible pit that they are in. Lord, and while you're in Haiti, Lord, we ask you to stop by Africa, Lord, and, and, Lord God, and, and the, the devastation and poverty, Lord God, and, and all of the things that have happened, Lord, throughout the centuries in Africa. Lord, in every region, Lord, every continent, Lord, every place, every country, Lord, every city, every town, every home, Lord, we know that you're able to provide. So, Father, we're going to put our faith and our trust in you, and we're going to believe your word, Lord, that you can do all things but fa all things but fail. Lord, so we put our trust in you. Now, Lord, go around this sanctuary today. Lord, touch, Lord, from the youngest to the oldest. Lord God, and provide for every one of our needs. Lord, and we thank you, and we praise you, and we magnify you, and we glorify you, and we give you full reign over all that will take place and take forth from this moment on. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, I just want to take this opportunity... Uh, to welcome you. Uh, Ms. Claxton, it's so good to see you. Uh, it, it's just always a pleasure uh, and, uh, and to, to see uh, what God is doing in, in your life and the, the beautiful family uh, that he has blessed you with and, and, and all and just how he has blessed your life. I can tell that God really favors you, that you are blessed and highly favored. So welcome and good morning and we're so glad to see you uh, and, and, and your and your family. Amen. <laughs> Brittany, it's good to see you, sweetheart. It's, it's always a pleasure. And, you know, you are uh, one of my favorite people. Uh, you are always one of my favorite students. Uh, and you are just a very fine young lady. And I think that God is, I know that God has not, uh, has, has a whole lot more planned for you. Uh, and I know that there is something your eyes cannot, cannot even see. And your ears can't even hear, nor has entered into your heart the things that God has prepared for your life. Uh, and we just know that he's going to do something wonderful and miraculous working in your life. He's going to bless your babies. He's going to bless your family. He's going to bless your life as he already has. So to that end, we just like to say good morning and God bless you. And it's so good to see you. Come on, let's bless these families. Amen. Amen. And to anyone who might be joining us over the internet, Facebook, or wherever uh, you might be in the world, we just bless you and we thank God for you. We just welcome you to Peace of Power Ministries and we pray that something will be said, something will be done, that somehow you'll be, uh, that you'll be convinced and committed uh, to the Lord Jesus Christ, that he is Lord. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. So welcome to you, to anyone who is joining us uh, through our website, uh, online worship service. Amen. Uh, having said that, let's prepare our hearts our, and our hearts and our minds for the word. As you know, we have a little uh, sermon starter with a video and uh, kind of gets us going and thinking in the right direction. So uh, I just wanted to just ask you to pay attention to what is to come forth, and then the next word uh, will be the word of God. Amen. Okay. So, oh, man. Kind of a hot day. Oh, think? Yeah. so hot. Oh. Woo! What? Like three months and no rain is called a drought, right? That's what I'm saying. Oh. Right. Yeah, what are we doing out here? Oh, okay, guys. I, I just thought we should meet and pray for rain. 
Oh, that's a great idea. Okay. Oh, yeah. I mean, it can't oh, hurt. Hey, okay. come on. So. Get on with it, man. Okay, so uh, join hands. Oh, okay. Prayer works better that way. Okay. Okay. Uh, oh. No, I got air conditioning All right. here. All right. Uh, dear God, oh, God, if you could just please make it rain. Oh, yes. oh please. And please. bring something cold to drink. Yeah. Oh, like water. Because yeah, it's so hot. Yes, yes it is. Water, please. Amen. Uh, amen. I think that went well. Amen. Uh, uh, <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. I pit it out perfectly good, sir, for a 10 second prayer. Uh, Thanks for coming out. Okay. I'll, I'll see you at the Bible study, Drew. I'm out of here. Okay. Uh, what are you doing? Oh, waiting for the rain. <laughs> Laura, uh, take take a look up there. I want you to see that there's just a blue sky with right. no clouds. I think that means no rain. Right. Remember, we just prayed about this. So. Oh, I know. We just prayed for rain. So, you know, the clouds are going to come, and then it's going to rain, and you're going to get wet. Are you new to this whole praying thing? Oh, no. No, no, no. <laughs> well, let me explain this to you. Um, I wouldn't be counting on the rain. Oh. Well, maybe it's not the rain you should be counting on. Amen. It's not the rain you should be counting on. So then the question becomes, who or what should we be counting on when we pray and when we live our lives? And quite frankly, we should all know the answer to that question, and since we're in church, I'm sure you can guess that who we should be counting on is, is God. But the truth of the matter is, many of us don't really believe what we pray for. And the truth of the matter is, many of us don't really, really believe God, God's Word. We believe that God's Word is God's Word. But we don't completely believe God's Word. So today I want to ask you a very simple question. And that question is, do you have faith in God? Or rather, what type of faith do you have in God? What type of faith do you have? As you know, faith towards God is a spiritual principle that when we put it in place and when we walk into it, it will provide for us a way to become spiritually mature. When we walk by faith and not by sight, God responds. And as we walk in that journey with God, with God responding, our faith increases. And we become more mature in the things of God because God begins to show us that He really is God. And so, I want to ask you, what type of faith do you have? Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, and it is the evidence of things that we cannot even see. And if we could give a definition to what faith really is, it is the absolute and complete belief and trust in God's Word, and the absolute and complete trust and belief in God's ability. Like the video that we just saw, the, the people, they pray for rain, and only one person really believed what they prayed for. She was walking as if it was already raining, or that it was about to rain, because she believed in God's abilities. So then let me ask you, do you believe in what you pray for? Do you believe that God is going to answer your prayers by faith? Or do you have that shroud of doubt hovering over the prayers that you pray? Where we pray, yes, but it can't happen right now. There's no way that we're going to see rain if we've been in the middle of a drought. There's no way we can see help if we've been helpless. There's no way that we can receive the things that we need if we have gone without. And so I just want to know whether or not you have absolute and complete belief and trust in God's Word and in His abilities, even when it doesn't seem like God is moving on your behalf. Now let me just say, there are four 
or five different types of faith that we could all have. We could have no faith, which many of us have. We could have little faith, weak faith, strong faith, or great faith. And so today my charge to you is to first determine what type of faith that you have. Even if you determine that you have no faith, at least I want you to look at your life and I want you to say to yourself and be honest with yourself and say, I have no faith. But then once you've done that, if you have no faith or a little faith or weak or whatever type of faith you have, by the end of this word, hopefully it won't last long, but, but by the end of the word today, I want you to make a promise to yourself that you're going to take your faith, whatever amount of faith you have, and you're going to take it to the next level of faith. I'm not saying go from little to great. But I'm saying if you have no faith, then let's go from little, or let's go from no to little. Or if you have little faith, let's go from little to more. So let's just define what these different levels of faith mean. And I'm just going to teach today. I just want to teach and just lay it out there. I want to lay it out there. The different types of faith, I'm going to take them one by one scripturally so that you can see exactly what God is saying. All right. Little faith. No faith. Uh, let's turn to Mark 4. Mark 4, beginning at verse 35. Mark 4 beginning at verse 35. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John in, in the Gospels. Mark 4, beginning at verse 35. And it reads, when I get there, Mark 4, verse 35. I know it's in here somewhere. Amen. And the same day when the evening was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, and they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly, and said unto one another, What manner of man, of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? All right. No faith. In this particular text, in verse 40, Jesus said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? So then there is a direct correlation between living by fear and living by faith. They are diametrically opposed to one another. In other words, we cannot at the same time be walking by faith and be walking by fear. Have you ever met someone, or maybe you've met yourself, where your default reaction to everything is one of fear? Or maybe you don't even get to the default because that's where you start. You start at a place of fear and worry. And, and, and as soon as a storm in life begins to blow, the absolute first reaction is one of fear. It's where you just, you just, you live by fear. You fear that something's going to happen to you. You fear that somehow you're not going to be able to make it. You fear that somehow it's not going to work out on, you, on your behalf. And so we are wrought with this type of reaction where we cannot go forward in life because we have this underlying thing in us where this thing is disabling us from taking the proper steps in the right directions to get to the place to do the things that God has ordained in our lives that we will be able to do. 
And not just what we would be able to do, but also so that God can do what He is able to do. Because when we walk in fear, God's ability to do what He wants to do is cut off. Because God responds to our faith. But our fear cuts off what God is trying to do. So fear is like a block. Fear is like a, a wall that somehow gets placed between us and God. We walk and we say, well, there's no way. There's no way that this can happen. Or oh, I'm afraid that something is going to happen in my life. And therefore, we cannot completely believe that God is going to move because we just simply do not believe that God is going to move. In the case of uh, our text, we've got the disciples on a ship. And, you, you know, if you can think about a storm, if you will. Think about the greatest storm you've ever seen. Maybe it was a tsunami. Maybe it was a tidal wave. Whatever it was that says there was a great storm. And so it wasn't like just a little itty bitty, it's going to rain kind of storm. This is the kind of storm that is like, okay, when you're sitting in your house and the wind is blowing, you're wondering if now Jesus is about to return. Amen. Where, 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 where trees are bending and, and things are moving and, and, and it seems like there is no way that you're going to be able to make it through that storm. That's what kind of storm they were going through. But they were on a little ship on the sea. Their first reaction was, we are going to die. If somebody doesn't do something right now, we are going to die. And so therefore they believed, or they began to believe, that they were going to die. They said, you know, don't you care that we're about to perish? But the wonderful thing about this story is at least they took a step towards Jesus. They knew he was on the boat. And so the beautiful thing is that they knew that Jesus was on the boat. Now, we have uh, working at advantage, but at the same time at disadvantage. The advantage is where we can look and see somebody else's experience and live through that. But the uh, disadvantage is... Physically, Jesus is not living on our boats. But he is by faith. Now, this is where our faith kicks in. By faith, the Lord Jesus Christ is living in our hearts. So he's actually closer to us than he was to the disciples. So if you believe that the Lord Jesus Christ is in your hearts, then if he did stop a storm for a group of people some 2,000 years ago, then I assure you that the same Lord is able to stop the same storm or even a worse storm operating in our lives. He is operating in our lives. He is living in our hearts. And when by faith we believe that He's living and He's walking and He's moving and He's traveling and He's concerned and He's able and that He will move, then God will move. Now, this is the thing. I know that you might be saying to yourself, that sounds so wonderful, Pastor. And guess what? What you're saying, I believe. But the way that we can really truly know that if we believe is if when we're in the middle of the storm, we don't first default to our fear. If the first thing we do is like, oh, I'm not going to make it, then just know that you're operating in that moment with no faith. If you think that something automatically is going to happen, then you are operating in no faith in that moment. Now, maybe you have faith in other areas. Maybe you, maybe you believe in other ways. But in that moment, if you believe that something bad is going to happen to you in that moment, or someone that you care about in that moment, you are operating with no faith. The Lord Jesus Christ said, why are you so fearful? O ye, how is it that you have no faith? So no faith is where we live a fear or doubt-based 
life. That's where we start and that's where we end up. We end up in fear. And because of that, it drives the decisions that we make and the things that we do or don't do because we just simply cannot even fathom for a moment that God is going to see us through what we're going through. So let me ask you today, what type of faith do you have? Do you have no faith or do you have little faith? Let's look at little faith. The Lord Jesus Christ said, and he said unto them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? But in Matthew 6, verse 25, Matthew 6, and I'll just read it, starting at verse 30, it says, Wherefore, if God, wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? O ye of little faith. Now, little faith. Little faith is where we are absolutely and completely we absolutely and completely believe and trust that God's Word is going to provide for our basic necessities in life. It's kind of like the kind of faith that, that our grandmothers had. Amen. Where literally, I know there was a rapper once upon a time who said, we've got to make a dollar out of 15 cents. Where our grandmothers literally made dollars out of 15 cents where somehow they, they knew that God was going to provide for them, and they walked as if God was going to provide for them, and he did. So little faith is where we do trust, that we don't have to take thought, uh, we have to take no thought of what we're going to eat or what we're going to put on or how, how we're going to, if we're going to be able to make it. So now, 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 now I know you're saying, well, oh, yeah, I got that kind of faith. But let me ask you, do you really, do you really have that kind of faith? Because with the economy being what it is, and with people clamoring on the jobs that we're on, with people making the decisions that they're making which may affect us, you know, when, when, when someone, a manager or someone says, you know, well, there may have to be some cutbacks, is our first thought, I'm not concerned about that because I know that the Lord that I serve is going to see me through. Or do we somehow first respond, like a first responder, begin to live by fear and wonder what we're going to do if something goes down on our job? So little faith is where we at least believe that God is going to be with us no matter what. Now let me just say this to you. Now, can, I, can, can I just be, keep, I'm going to keep it real, you know, on behalf of the church. Every month, for the time that we have had this church, we have not at one point or one time been concerned about paying the rent. Not once. We've always had the resources. Somehow. Small church like us. But this month, because there's been a fall off, a shake out, or whatever, wherever people are, I don't know. You know, we, we, we were long, we were, we, we, let's just say it, it was tight. <laughs> it was tight. And, and I made a decision that when I saw where it was going, I said to the Lord, Lord, you have never left us nor forsaken us. Now, I could have gone into, uh, you know, plan B mode and business planning mode and, and all kinds of, like, let me start calling here and there and, let, you know, let's start, let's start panicking. How are we going to be able to make it through this month? And instead of that, I went in our prayer closet and I shut the door and I cried out unto the Lord 
And I said, Lord, this is your church. And I know that you're able to provide for our needs. We're all doing the best that we can to, to support the church. And, and we, pray, we praise God for that. And, 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 and it came all the way unto, unto Friday afternoon. The rent is due on the 12th, by the way. Friday afternoon was the 11th. <laughs> Amen? And, and so it came all the way to the final hour. And then I got word that resources had become available. So I say all of that to say to you that God's resources are available. And when we put God's word to the test and we completely believe and trust God's word, then God's word is going to do what he said it's going to do. He said, why are you concerned about what you're going to eat and why are you concerned about what you're going to wear? Why are you concerned about where you're going to live? Or how are you, why are you concerned about all of these things? If God takes care of the needs of a, of a bird and, and God takes care of the needs of the lilies in the field, then God is going to surely take care of all of your needs. So if we would just trust God with just a mustard seed grain of faith, just a little bit of faith in this way. And just know that in the midst of it all, in the kingdom of God, God is well able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can think or ask according to His power. So instead of defaulting to fear, you know, let's just, let's just decide. If, you, if you've been operating in fear then let's just make a decision to say, you know what? It works. God's Word, it works. And so we've got to walk according to God's Word and just have a little bit of faith. Now, let me show you what this little bit of faith will do. Matthew 17, verse 20. Real quick, I'll go here right quick. Matthew 17, verse 20. Matt, uh, it, and it is mustard seed faith that says, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing, 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 nothing shall be impossible to you. Nothing shall be impossible unto you. With just a little bit of night, when I say a little bit of faith, I'm not talking about a, 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 like a measurement like from, from you know, filling up a glass of faith. I'm talking about the type of faith. Like if, 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 you, if you look at a mustard seed, it's small, but it's made of the right stuff. So our faith has to be made of the right stuff. Where when we plant it, in the supernatural soil, we can believe that it is going to bear supernatural fruit. In other words, that God's Word is going to work. The Word of God says, with a mustard seed grain of faith, nothing shall be impossible. Nothing shall be impossible unto you. In order to get this kind of faith, it goes on in verse 21 and it says, How be it? This kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. So we've got to cultivate our faith. In order to get our faith working right, we've got to do the things that build up our faith. In other words, if you have no faith, you operate by fear, then the best way to go from no faith to little faith is to simply pray and believe that what God has spoken He's going to do. And sometimes it requires us to fast. In other words, to really concentrate all of our supernatural, all of our spiritual resources towards the performance of a particular thing that God, that we need God to do according to His Word. So we really need to, in other words, focus on God. To really press our way through the flesh. 
press our way through our mass and simply just focus with all of our energy, with all of our strength, with all of our, with all of our ability to just simply focus on God's Word and be not denied. Have you ever wanted something so badly that you just were not going to be denied no matter what? Now, many times that kind of, <laughs> that uh, it doesn't always work to our advantage. Because, <laughs> you know, because you, you know, well, I'll just leave all that alone. But, but it, it, <laughs> usually, if we really have something, now, I'm talking about something according to God's will. Let me put it in that category. Have you ever wanted something that was God's will? And because it was God's will, you focused on it and you, you decided that you were not going to be denied by God to get from Him what it was that you needed from Him. Let's say it was help. Let's say it was, let's say it was strength. So by, 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 not, by having that focus on God, by focusing on Him, what happens is God will respond. He will respond. We don't, have, we don't serve a deaf God. We don't serve a God who's not listening. But we serve a God who not only can respond, but we serve a God who will respond. But God is waiting for us to respond. For us to approach Him. For us to make a move towards Him. For us to believe Him. For us to have faith in Him. For us to pray, for us to fast, so that our faith can be made out of the right stuff, and so that we can obtain all of the great and precious promises that God has promised in His Word. So, what type of faith do you have? What type of faith do you have? Well, maybe you have weak or strong faith. Weak faith, weak faith in Romans 4, we're talking about Abraham. Let me just give you a little bit of background. You already know him, but I'm, I want to give you some background for those of you who may not know him. Abraham, God made a promise to Abraham that he was going to have a child and that this child was going to be the heir uh, uh, to, uh, to many nations. And, and, and because of this promise, what made it so, if you will, in the natural absurd was Abraham was 100 years old. And so, and so for him to believe that God was going to do such a thing, he really, really, really needed to believe that God was going to do this thing for him. So God made this promise to Abraham. And in so making this promise, it was up to Abraham to like really believe or not believe. Now, Romans 4 verse 19 it says, and being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. Now he, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. So, Abraham did not think about or consider his own physical condition. He didn't think about his age. He didn't think about his condition, his situation, his scenario. He didn't think about any of that. He just, he just thought about what God promised him. Now, now, weak in faith for us is where we do believe God's promises. We do believe that whatever God has promised, he will do it. But then, because of who we are and where we've been, we begin to question and rationalize and analyze, and we begin to think and, and put in input our own ideas about what God can do or what God can't do. We say yes, but then we say yes, but. Yes, I believe God can do this, but I don't believe he can do it in my situation because I'm too old. Or because I'm, because I, I, I'm too tired. Or because I'm not able. Or because whatever the situation is. We begin to say God can do it. I know that he can do it. He's done it before but he can't do it for me. 
or he won't do it for me because I've made some bad choices in my life. I've done some bad things in my life, so I know that God would do it for somebody else, but God is not going to do it for me. So with that, we are weak in our faith. We're weak because we think too much. We try to think for God. Instead of simply just saying to, to God, I simply believe and I will continue to believe that whatever you have spoken, you are also able to perform in my life. Now that's what Abraham wasn't. He was not weak in his faith because he didn't consider. It says, and being not weak in faith, he considered not. In other words, he didn't even think about it. He didn't even worry about it. He didn't even, he didn't even like wonder about what God was going to be able to do. Instead, he just said, you know what, God said it. He said, I'm going to have a child. He said, I, I, you know, he made this promise. So I just simply have to keep believing until I see a manifestation of what God has promised in my life. What has God promised you? What has God spoken to you concerning your life? If you're not sure, I would like to invite you to the book of Genesis, and then my, my request to you would be to just keep reading. Just keep reading until God speaks to you, because in God's Word, there is a word concerning your life. There is a word that God has for your life concerning your destiny, your purpose, your direction, what's going to come of your life. And when God makes that promise to you, that means that that's something that He intends and that He will fulfill if you believe Him. So Abraham was not weak because he did not consider, but many of us are weak in our faith because that's all we do is consider what, God, what, what, what we can't do, what God can't do, what God won't do, what God's not going to do. We, we go into that space and start considering, well, I, I, you know, I just can't do what I used to do. Or, you know, I, I, you know <laughs> we just go into this place of just consideration. When we become, para we, we become uh, what is it, uh, we suffer from paralysis from our analysis. But we just cannot see a manifestation because we're operating. We do believe God, but we don't believe God is going to do it for us. So therefore, we're weak in faith. Now, what Abraham was, was he was strong in faith. And I'll be done in a minute. I think I'm going to close on this. He was strong in faith. And he was strong in faith in verse 20 because it says, He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith giving glory to God. In other words, he was completely persuaded that whatever God spoke concerning his life, God was going to do concerning his life. And he didn't like trip on anything else. He didn't stagger at the promise. Like when God spoke it, he didn't like draw back from it. Instead, he walked towards it and said, okay, if that's what you said, Lord, then I've got to believe that that's what you're going to do. So he was not weak in faith because he didn't consider his own condition, but he was strong in faith because he was fully persuaded and did not stagger when God made the promise. If God made the promise, he believed that God was going to perform the promise concerning his life. And being fully persuaded, verse 21, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Do you have strong faith? Do you stagger at the promise of God? Or do you completely believe and have absolute complete belief and trust that whatever God said, that God is going to do it concerning you? What kind of faith do you have? What type of faith do you have? You know that you have strong faith Listen, you know that you have strong faith if you can begin to praise God in advance of seeing a manifestation of what God has promised. It's almost like the video we saw where the young lady took out her umbrella 
and just was waiting for God to move because she completely believed that God was going to make it rain because of the situations that they were in. Do you put up your praise umbrella and just say, Lord, I praise you in advance even though the situation looks completely jacked up right now. Even though the situation looks completely impossible to me. Lord, I'm going to walk with this mustard seed grain of faith that I have and believe your word that says that nothing shall be impossible to me. Lord, I'm going to take my faith and I'm going to praise you in advance. In fact, you know that you have, you know that you have strong faith when it's really hot, when it's really difficult, when it's really, really, really looking impossible, and you just begin to praise God in advance because you just know, and I'm not talking about that fake kind of praise, I'm talking about that hallelujah praise that we pray when we know that God is going to do something in our lives. Abraham just gave glory to God in advance and said, Lord, I'm going to praise you and magnify you and glorify you because you made this promise and he knew that it was not possible for God to lie. He knew that it was impossible for God to lie. And if God did not lie to Abraham, I assure you that God is not going to lie to you. The promise is sure and it belongs to you. And so we've got to take that and say, you know what, it is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God. So I praise you in advance of the manifestation of the promise being performed in my life. Let me say something to you. You're worthy of the promise. I just I don't know why, I mean, I wasn't prepared, it just came in my spirit, but I just felt like I needed to just say to you that you are worthy of the promise. It doesn't matter what stacked up or what road you traveled or, 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 or how you tripped or slipped or whatever happened in between now and then but, or then and now. But whatever then happened then was then. But whatever is now is now. And, and we're going to apply our faith now. The Bible says now is faith. Now is faith. Not then was faith. Now is faith. So your faith, you are worthy by faith of God performing his promise no matter what happened back then. That's over. That's over. God forgave. Well, God has, has moved past. God has given grace. Uh, he has given, hallelujah, uh, he has made a way out of new, uh, a, a, new, a new way out of no way. God, hallelujah, has, you know, if a man be in Christ, old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. It's a new day, and you can operate with God's new mercies and his tender mercies and his loving kindness and operate in what God has for you today. God has his promises for you today. And so we've got to apply our strong faith today to what God has promised to us today. Today is the day. Tomorrow's not promised. And yesterday is gone. So what are we going to do today? Let's live by faith today. Not staggering at the promises of God. Not considering our own and our old situations. Not uh, living by fear. Not living by doubt, but living by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. Into the promises of God. Into it. Just walk into it. We have a choice. We have a choice to walk through one of two doors in life. We can walk through the door called control. Where through that door, we desire to control our own destiny. Or we can choose to walk through the door called the unknown. Where we can walk by faith according to what God has spoken in his word. Not knowing exactly how God is going to do it. But just believing that God is going to do it. So what type of faith do you have? What type of life do you lead? Do you live in the control zone? Or do you live in the unknown zone with God by faith? 
What type of faith do you have? What type of faith do you have? Now, I'll just say there is a great faith. And I'm not going to go into it. I'm not even going to read the scripture. But great faith is the best faith that we can have. It's just where we absolutely and completely understand and believe and trust whatever God has spoken. In Matthew 8, 5 through 10, it just tells the story of a centurion who was a Roman centurion. He was not a Christian. He was a Roman centurion. But someone in his household was about to die. And he believed Jesus to the point of like, he, said, look, hey, look. I, I, he didn't feel worthy, but he believed Jesus. And so he said, you know what? I, I'm, I, I'm not worthy for you to even come to my house. But one thing I believe is that if you speak your word, whatever your word says, it's going to do. It's going it's to be performed. So that is great faith. It's where whatever God has spoken, we just absolutely and completely believe that God will do it. So, what type of faith do you have? I told you before we began that my goal was to at least explain to you what types of faith there are. And then the second goal was to get you to take a step from one level of faith to the next. What type of faith do you have? If you have no faith, it's okay. Because that gives you a starting point to say, you know what, I have no faith, but I'm going to take it to the next level of having at least a little faith. If you have weak faith, then take it to the next level of having strong faith. If you consider things and analyze things, then stop doing that. <laughs> and just simply believe God. If you have little faith, then take it to great faith. And this is how we do it. Make a decision, fast and pray, and then walk in the Word. Yes, that's it. Make a decision, fast and pray, and walk in the Word. Amen? That's all I got to say for today. But I hope that you've answered the questions that need to be answered and that you've made some decisions that need to be decided. That you will define the type of faith that you have. And go back and look at these scriptures. That's why I gave you a handout. Go back and look at the video. That's why we take it. Go back and, and listen to it and watch it and, and go back through the notes and get it for yourself and get it again and get it. I do it myself. I go back, you know, and I look at, I look at this stuff, not because I want to see myself. <laughs> but I, get, I go back and get it because I say, you know what, that's a pretty good word. And I'm not saying that it's God's word. I just want to get some word. Amen. So... You know, so I, I go back and get it so I can get it. So I can, like, say, okay, well, if I'm going to say to the people, this is what you should do, then that's what I should also do. So, amen, so I dare you to go look at the Word and get it for yourself. And then really, really, seriously, seriously go back and apply it to your life. And let's take this thing up a notch. We're talking about growing up spiritually, not staying at that same level where we've been and you know, getting the same results that we've always gotten. It's time to take this thing up to the next level so that we can really start seeing the manifestations of God operating in our lives. That's what this is all about. This is not about getting a, a bigger car or getting a better house. Amen? Amen? You know, you go to some churches and, it, you, know, uh, you know, you start talking about faith. It's like, okay, well, you know, you know yeah, walk by faith and start a business. Amen? Uh, yeah, walk by faith and write a book. Okay, but that's not what this is about. This is about really walking with the Lord Jesus Christ and seeing him like really, really like take interest and move in even the smallest, intricate details of our lives. The things that we are concerned about, even the small things. Watching him move even in the small things notwithstanding the big thing that he has also able to do. Amen? The big thing that he's also able to move in. The impossible thing that somebody, maybe, maybe it's you telling you, or maybe somebody else told you, or maybe the devil is in your ear, whispering to you how impossible the situation is. 
But that's not God. God's never going to say, oh, I can't do that when you're on your own, boo. Now, it might not be God's will. But whatever it is, I assure you that God is able. He can do it. Like, because he's God. He can do everything. But fail. So, what type of faith do you have? Let's take that. And let's run with it. Let's give the Lord some praise. Amen. 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 I want to take this opportunity to sing an old song that that I used to really, really enjoy singing. Uh, it, it, it's one that if you really, really listen to it and you really, really apply the words to it, it, it will enable us to deepen our relationship with God. So I'm wondering if we can just Stand to our feet and just sing, I surrender all. I told you I'm feeling kind of nostalgic these days. Uh, and, uh, and, and the Lord actually he kind of brought me back to it. It's just something about these old songs that cause us to really, really, really focus on God. Amen. So, amen. So, I surrender all.
I give myself to I surrender Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Come on, let's just pray. Father, we ask you now, Lord, to just have your way, Lord God. Lord, you know where we are in our faith. Lord, you know where we're not. So, Father, we come to you now, Lord, just surrendering our situations to you. Lord, you know, Lord God, what we stand in need of and in the way of increasing our faith. Lord, you know the ways that we've fallen short of your glory, Lord, and the ways that we've fallen short of our faith. Lord, now give us, Lord God, a way to increase our faith. Lord God, that our faith can be more effective, that our relationship can be made deeper, that, Lord, you will manifest your word in our lives. So, Father, now, Lord God, deepen our relationship with you. That you will be well pleased with our lives. Father, we come, Lord God, yea, first, repenting of our sins. Lord, turning from our wicked ways. You said, if my people who are called by my name will turn from their wicked ways and humble themselves and pray, you said, then will we heal from heaven. Then will you heal our land. So, Father, we've come, Lord, to turn away from our our sins. And, Lord, turn our faces to Zion. And look to the hills from whence does come our help. Lord, we surrender, Lord God, our, our fears to you, Lord. Lord, knowing that you've not given us the spirit of fear, but power and love and a sound mind. Lord, some of us need a restoration of a sound mind. Lord, there's some of us, Lord, who feel like we're losing our mind. But Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you said that if we would just keep our minds stayed on you, you would, Lord God, keep us in perfect peace. Lord, you said we don't have to be anxious for anything but by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. 
we can let our request be known unto you. And your peace that surpasses all understanding will guard our hearts and our minds by Christ Jesus. Lord, restore the peace in our minds. Lord, that we won't be all messed up and, and stressed out, Lord, but yet we can just, Lord, have the peace that surpasses all understanding. Lord, you know, oh God, yea, what we stand in need of. So, Father, by faith, Lord, we turn our worries over to you, taking no thought of those things any longer. But yet, Lord God, just, Lord, just seeking ye first, Lord, seeking the kingdom of God and your righteousness. And you said all of these things will be added unto us. And yet, Father, there be someone today who's standing here, Lord, without having a relationship with you. Lord, we like to pray the prayer of salvation. I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus that he died on the cross and that he was raised from the dead. And we thank you, Lord, that when we pray that prayer, you said that we shall be saved. So, Lord, it's my prayer that someone prayed that prayer, prayed that prayer today. That, Lord God, that no one will be, Lord, left outside of that, of that, of that kingdom, Lord, that you have made available to us. That no one, oh God, will come through the gate, Lord God, and not be able to enter in. So, Father, now, Lord God, take control, of, Lord God, over all of our lives, Lord God, and, and Lord, yea, let your, your word be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path, that, Lord, we can walk in your glorious light and in your power. Lord, we surrender our own. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. To Thee I freely give. I will never love and trust in his presence daily I Lord, we just bless you, O oh God, in this time, Lord. And Lord God, we do, we again pray, Lord, for the people in Japan and, and Haiti, Lord, and all across every land. Lord, knowing, Lord God, that you're able to save. Lord, that you're able to save to the utmost, Lord. So, Father, we, Lord, like the centurion, Lord, we ask you to just speak the word and bring help, Lord God. Lord, bring help, Lord God, to the people that need your help, Lord God, all across the land and in this place, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may take your seats. Amen. Amen.
Now's the time that we can worship through giving and uh, you know, and I just thank God for the ability to you know, just pass it this way and come back around. The ability to just be able to give unto the Lord. God has been very good to us. And, and you know, we, we sometimes take for granted you know, that God is even concerned about our finances. And, you know, and I can speak from experience and say that in my life, my finances have been completely jacked up. <laughs> but during those times, my, my finances were jacked up because my life was jacked up. And I wasn't putting God first. And it wasn't until I, I discovered that, that I have to put God first in every area of my life, including my finances. I gave God everything. I said, Lord, here, take my mess, take my, take my, my wrongful thinking, take my wrongful living, take my finances. It all belongs to me. I can assure you that when I did so, thank you, sweetheart. Thank you, precious. I can assure you that when I did that, God took my life and everything that I gave to him and he turned it around. Everything. Sister Shelley's and I finances, our, 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 our lifestyle, our, our ability to live in a way that glorifies God all came from him. And so my appeal to you is not for money today. My appeal to you is to consider putting God first in everything. And that includes our finances. It's just when we start... See, finances is the one way that the devil can kind of hold us at bondage. Because he knows that we need money, right? We need money to pay our rent, our mortgage, our car note, our food bill, take care of our children take care of our lives, uh, keep the lights on. He knows that. And so he, if he makes it so important when we get so wrapped up into it and so worried about it, then we can't be putting God first because we're putting our worry about our finances first. So I just want to appeal to you to just consider. If you're going to consider something, consider putting God first. Even in your finances. Like, if you make a dollar, give God a dollar. <laughs> Amen. If you make ten dollars, give God a dollar. Amen. Sister Shelley and I, just to share with you, it, it doesn't matter. Like, and this, and this is where it gets difficult, right? When, when God starts blessing you, and you get... A little bit here and a little bit there. And it's okay, 10%. Well, what are we supposed to do? You know, if I get a, a big check, what if I hit the lottery? Amen. Well, I hope you don't play it. But, Sister so Shelly got a, a bonus. Huh? We don't, no, we don't, we don't. I'm, I'm just saying. I mean, you know, whatever. Well, in, in our case, what if you get a bonus on your job? What are you going to do with your bonus? Oh, well, you know, this is extra. You know, this is not, this doesn't go in the, this doesn't go in the income area. Nia, yeah, what are you doing? We're watching you. We're watching you. We can see you. We can see you. And so, what, if, what do you do in that situation? We get extra. Well, let's tell you what, what we should do. We should do what we've always done. And give God whatever it is that He has. So I can just tell you that we're excited to give unto the Lord because God has given so much unto us. Put God first, and God will see you through everything, else, even our time. Amen. Something you, news you can use. Amen. Well, let's give the Lord some praise. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. I just want to share with you a couple of events, uh, a couple of upcoming things. I wanted to say that that we are going to continue to fast and pray. Uh, we're in the middle of Lent season. I know that uh, many churches don't celebrate Lent, neither do we necessarily. It's necessarily. But one thing I do celebrate is the 40 days before before uh, Easter comes. Uh, and we are on day five. Today is the fifth day of the 40 days between Ash Wednesday and Easter Sunday. So today is day five. And so I just wanted to just let you know that and encourage you, you know, that if, if you're fasting, I'm not fasting from food this time. I'm fasting from whatever stands in my way from being in God's presence. You know, so, you know, I want to just encourage you to fast from at least one thing that's standing in the way of or hindering you from being in God's presence. Also, we are reading along in the devotional uh, called The Power of the Cross Daily. So if you have one of those, then I ask, you know, I encourage you to read along with us. If you don't, we can get you a copy. I think we have some extra today. Uh, also, Saturday, April 16th, is our church's 7th anniversary. That's significant. And it's my 13th pastoral anniversary. 13 years pastoring, not this church, but pastoring. Since 1998. July 1st, 1998, is when I started pastoring. Which is quite significant. Uh, <laughs> and so, I've never really, personally, I've never celebrated a pastoral anniversary. Not one. So, I just feel like, you know... It's time. <laughs> right. It's time. You know, it's the 13th pastoral anniversary. The church's seventh anniversary. It doesn't have to be anything big. I just want to celebrate. And we've been talking about coming together and just, you know, having a little, you know, church space with you. You know, not anything big. Just, you know, our church and family, friends, you know, not a big event. We've got to go on the radio and advertise and all that kind of stuff. But just, you know, just something where we can just all share a meal. And some good music and good times together. So I, I would like to do that if we could on that day. Uh, and so I wanted to just keep that before you because it's coming up on it. Uh, also, um, in the month of April, um, yeah, the month of April, I'll be teaching on baptism. And I, I would like to have a baptism service. I would like to have a baptism service somewhere uh, between, let's say, April 16th and April 24th which is Easter. So during the Easter week, uh, it's what they call the Passion Week, I'd like to do a, a baptism service during that time. So uh, there are a lot of things coming up in April. Uh, I can tell you for sure I won't be able to pull it together myself. Um, you know, so I definitely need your help in pulling these things together. So I just wanted to, you know, drop that on you, uh, give that, you know, so that you can give that some thought and some prayer and, uh, and so that you can become involved uh, in, in these uh, services and celebrations that are coming up before us. All right, so that's, that's all we have. Uh, again, it's so good to see you all. Um, you know, it's always a pleasure. Uh, I can think way back to, you know, when you used to come up to the school and, you know, for parent, uh, parent meetings uh, on Brittany's behalf. And uh, there was usually a good report on Brittany's behalf uh, but <laughs> usually, uh, but it was always a pleasure to see you because not many parents, grandparents, are involved in the lives of their children the way that you are. So we just we thank God for you, and it always is a pleasure to see you. Amen. So, uh, amen. So, uh, uh, Mariana, she holding up three. Does that mean I got three minutes? Is that what it means? I got three minutes left. All right. So uh, Mariana has given us the time check. Pastor, you you uh, you got three minutes, so <laughs> uh, so we will bring it to a close. If there's any, is there anything else for the good of order that that we need to bring up or talk about or mention or anything anything any, anyone has to say or wishes to say at all this day? No, no, don't anybody talk at once. No, okay, I Britain, no, 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 got your new job, everything. Come on, let's bless Britain. She got a new job and everything. Amen. We're so proud of you. Amen. So if there's nothing further, then you can stand to your feet so that we can, uh, in three minutes or less, make our way, <laughs> make our way out of here.
Let's just pray. Father, we thank you and we praise you and we magnify you and glorify you. We, we love you and adore you. We thank you for all that has gone forth in this day. Lord, we ask you to bless the offering, Lord. Bless every hand that gave, every heart that had a desire to give, Lord. And we just ask you now, Lord, to just, Lord, yeah, to just bring order to our lives and in every area, including our finances. Lord, we lift it up to you, Lord, and lift, oh God, this church up to you and all that concerns us. We know that you will perfect us, Lord, and that you will, Lord, provide for all of our needs. So we bless you and we praise you and thank you and glorify you and love you and adore you and worship you in spirit and in truth. And we ask you, Lord God, as we prepare to leave from this place, if you will keep us in communion, Lord, with your sweet Holy Spirit, that he will rest, rule, and abide and will be with us now, henceforth and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen, amen, and amen. Why don't you hug your neighbor? Amen. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. <laughs> Such a well behaved and sat and, you know, gave us a time check and everything. <laughs> he was like, yep, I was ready to go. <laughs> oh, well, bless your heart. Oh. Uh oh.